gospel is not working in our home. We don't have the right to take it outside. Hi everyone. You are welcome back once again to my channel. If you are new in this place, my name is Oluwada Milola Martin. In this place, you wake up smiling. You feel no hands. And your bondage will be removed. I am dedicated to the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. To help all my viewers to see Jesus and his gospel throughout all the pages of the Bible. You are welcome once again to my channel. Today we are going to talk about five vital foundations that is make your marriage to be matter most. Many buildings that we see outside, they look beautiful and very great. Some of them develop crack, and some suddenly collapse due to the weak of their foundation. I will tell you a very short story. When I finished my ordinary national diploma, I was able to get a job and 54 marina in Lagos. Even in Lagos, it is expensive. For this reason, I need to live with my sister. In the same compound that my sister was living there, one of their labor, they are also couples who love each other badly. Wherever you find husband, definitely you will see his wife beside him. They go out together, they eat together. Their love and unity was so strong. And whenever the husband is coming back from work, he never come back in empty handed. Surely he will bring something along for his wife and for his children. Not only that, even talking about the house shop, you find wife in the kitchen, cooking. Husband also is cleaning. And here is my sister husband. That hardly a sister in anything at all. Except from financial aspects. He believed that financially, if he can cater for your family, wife should be able to cater and make all the responsibility of all. Compare their own with their labor. It's always bringing an argument. Because my sister admired this their labor. One day, this their labor that my sister always admired, she caught her husband cheating. And this is the beginning of their problem in their matrimonial home. Lady was not be able to handle the issue. Due to the love, affection, and the unity that is between them. Although they have unforgettable moments together. Everywhere and there you will see them with an argument. There is no more unity, no more love. Finally, the husband refused to come back home. The situation begins to move from bad to worse. This sister I'm talking about, she's full housewife. By the time the husband refused to come back home, she doesn't have a place she can run to because she was being impregnated when she was in school and their marriage was not properly approved by both parents. She was being depressed. She fell sick, how to bounce back and cater for her children. It's become an heavy load on her. What is the lesson that we need to learn from this story? Is that we should not compare our home with any home. And the second lesson is that bad foundation will always produce bad building. And no matter how the building, how long the building may be, if the foundation is being destroyed, the foundation is not well prepared. It will always collapse, no matter how beautiful the building, it look outside. I want to use this medium to say thanks to all our husbands, our daddy, that they are watching this program. Thanks for being faithful. Even though your wife is full as wife, you cater for home, your wife, your children, and still you are still faithful to your wife. We pray that God will continue to bless you, favor you and honor you, promote every of your endeavor. 
Matthew 5, verse 14 says, You are the light of the world, a building that is set on a ye that cannot be hidden. Jesus is simply said something in this place. The Christian home, you are the God representative on earth. You are my ambassador. Shine your light. You have to understand that there is no light in this world. Except in Jesus alone. And the light that we possess is only the light that Jesus shines through us. And don't forget, if the purpose is not being known, abuse is inevitable. Why your home is matter? It is because it will be remembered for the impact you make in your generation. Never hide your light. Just because you want to accept any social group, remember that you are in the world. But you are not of the world. God wants your home to be a voice and not an echo, contributor, not a consumer. He wants your light to be so shine, so others can see the light of Christ through you. A man of God says, if the gospel is not working in our home, we don't have the right to take it outside because charity will begin from home. Today, I would like to share with you what I personally believe as Five Fighter Foundation of every Christian home. Ephesians 5.23 says, Husband is the head of the home, just as the Christ is the head of the church. We need to set a spiritual temperature in the family. I will give you an example. When you finish cooking your food, and you need to do one or two things in the kitchen. Maybe you need to clean up. Before you eat your food, if your food is hot, can it flies touch that food at that moment? If it flies mistakenly touch that food, flights will not be able to survive. This fighter role cannot be delegated to your wife. You need to direct spiritual causes of your home through prayer, teaching, and also living a good example, not a drunkard, a liar, a thief, or a womanizer. The Talolomi 4 verse 9 says, Beware, take e, things that your eyes have seen, things that you have learned, let them not depart from your heart. Teach it to your children, likewise to your grandchildren. Our family is blessed. If our husband can take care of this responsibility, sadly, the Bible gives us an example of some fathers which they fell in their responsibility. An example is Eli, David and Samuel. You look into 1 Samuel, 8, 1 to 3. How Samuel make his children to become the judge in Israel. And how those two sons, they misbehave, and they are not ruled well, and God was not happy with them. Eli was the godfather of Samuel, and the same mistake that Eli made, that same pitfall, it is where Samuel also find himself. I think Samuel is supposed to learn from the mistake of Eli so that he can get his children in a godly way. Our family is blessed if husband loves and graciously appreciates his wife. Ephesians 5.25 says, Husband love your wife, just as Christ loved the church, and he gave himself for it. In spite of our weaknesses, God still commands all our husbands to love us unconditionally, just as Christ loved the church. Please, respond quickly to our needs in time of our sickness and needs. Moreover, don't allow your wife to be the one to take care of all the responsibility of all. 
It is very overwhelmed. Some ladies, they are not housewife. They need to go to work. Take care of their children. Before they go to work, they need to clean home. Cooking. Prepare everything that the husband is going to use. And to make the matter worse, they don't even have a single housemaid. And that is not love. We are all partnered together in this business. That is called marriage. If you appreciate your mother, for bringing you to this world. You appreciate your brother and sister for their contribution in your life. You appreciate your boss that is in your office. Why don't you say thanks and appreciate all the efforts of your wife to keep your home going? I want you to watch this short video. You're my melody, my sweet baby. Oh, I will they make my heart go ching ching and shake body. See, I promise you, you got your money. The love will you give me so. And I don't really want it We were on my heart The crown upon my head The essence of my life All the love we more You are the queen we on my heart The crown upon my head The essence of my life All the love we more Obi more, Obi more, Obi more to your wife is an abuse. I think you are the only one that is left behind in this generation. All of us who have leaving you behind. A good example of a father that our husband needs to emulate. It is Joseph, earthly father of Jesus. He has a righteous character. He handles all crises in that relationship with dignity. He cared for his fiance and to crown it up. He also taught Jesus spiritual principle. Luke chapter 2, 40 to 41 says, Jesus was what strong, filled with wisdom and the Holy Spirit. Likewise, the grace of God was upon him. In verse 41, the Bible also makes us to realize how is Mary and Joseph? They used to took Jesus to the temple in the time of their feast. Some men still need to go for personal retreats because they cannot handle crisis in their home. They turn themselves to mockery in their environment. Daddy that is listening to this program, when was the last time you lead us in prayer? When was the last time? You taught our children God's word. When was the last time that you lay your hand on us 
and prophesy prophetically upon us. Have you ever spent a quality time with us, instructing us in God's way? I want to remind you of something, that we are your future. And your future depends on us. I will give you a simple illustration. A father was trying to treat his son. How to say thank you when you receive anything? How to share a cup of wine? And he gave some part of it to his son. And he told his son, Let me. All what I have taught you today. And instead of his son to say thank you, his son lifted up the cup. And he said, Share, daddy. Children will always follow your example. Second, the foundation of a mother that has a noble character. The family is blessed when a wife is a woman of a good character, caring, a woman of prayer, always available, is willing to be submissive. Proverbs 31, show us the qualities of that woman. First Peter chapter 3, verse 3 also warns us. It's one all the woman. Don't let your beauty to be hard toward the law. Peter told us to also have an inward beauty. Our beauty should not depend on jewelries, years time, and the clothes that we are wearing alone. But the qualities of the virtues that we are carrying, wife, your prayer and your character, it will carry your family, it will carry them through in time of difficulties and crises. Your character matters most. And I find that to be so true in my three. own family. And we talk about the foundation of children. Children that is being brought up in the fear of the Lord. They will be a blessing to their family. And the function of that family will be a glorious one. They will not become a notorious. Children that brought shame to their home in the future. Or children that is not giving them peace of mind. In their old age, education, without teaching our children, in the will of the Lord. I think it is just a waste of time. They must learn to serve God in their young age so that they can pass it to their own children. Proverbs 22, verse 6 says, Train up your children in the way that they will go. And when they become old, they will never depart from it. Isaiah 44, verse 3 to 4. God promised our children that their future will be glorious. He will pour his spirit upon them. He will bless them. And there will be difference among their peers for good. Isaiah 65, 23, 24 says, You will not labor in vain over them. Likewise, they will not bring trouble to you because they are seed of the Lord. In verse 24, God says, Before they speak, he will hear them while they are yet speaking. He is going to answer them as we all guide our children in the will of the Lord. We don't need to fear of because their future. we know that their future is glorious in the hand of God. Number four, the foundation of a family altar. There is a word that says, a family that stay together. Likewise, they pray together. Although this word is not found in the Bible, a family is being blessed. When the father, mother, and the children, they have a family altar in their home. A place where they sing God first before they sink man. But how can we achieve this in this generation? And we have been working tirelessness. If many of us can remember how we have been brought up, 
when we need to go to church first in the morning, before we prepare ourselves for our daily activities. Now things become more easier for us. Instead of wake up and run into church in the morning, we have an altar in our home whereby we can communicate with God before we communicate with men. Or how can this be possible? When the wife is doing money duty, husband is in the light duty, and children is in the boarding school. Or a situation whereby husband and wife are not even living together. I pray for every home that they are watching this program that God will bring divine intervention to every area of your struggle in your home. Even some family take their breakfast on the road. This has become more hard. And it's making people to forget about God. It is making family not to remember their relationship with their maker. Everyone wants to pay for their bills. They don't want to get sacked at work. They don't want to resume to work late. They want to obey every single and tiny word of their boss. Because that is the way the salary will come to pay their bills. Having a prayer with family, spending the 30 minutes or 20 minutes, it's become a tease of struggle. According to 1 Peter chapter 3, verse 7, it makes us to understand how prayer altar is very important in our home. It is a place to bring healing to every family out. We can pray over it. Bitterness can be removed through forgiving one another when struggle arises in our home. The first thing is to talk to God first before we talk to each others and before we take it outside to seek for help couples with equal faith and love their fire never go down and number five the foundation of your family being part of the god family the church is god family and being part of it together with your family through your home it will bring a blessing to your family. We need to teach our family to learn how to love God's family and to make themselves available to serve. Psalm 27, verse 14. David says something. The one thing I have desired and that I will sink all the days of my life is to dwell in the house of the Lord. Joshua also declared this. That I and my family, we will always serve the Lord. Your home can also use for the purpose of God. Through small group or a prayer group, it can also be used for a place where people sing for spiritual cancer. With this five foundation of a blessed home, if we properly follow it and we practice it, I'm very sure that our home is blessed. Let us all build a blessed home and family. I pray for every home that they are listening to this program. That God will wrap his hand around you. He will fill your home with love, unity, and affection. I pray that the Lord will hide your home under his tabernacle and supply all your needs according to his riches in glory. Today is the day that God has set apart for you and for your family. Bring your home to him and for your family to be a blessed one. If you have not yet surrendered your life to Christ, this is the right time for you to lay yourself at the altar of sacrifice because tomorrow may be too late for you. Have a glorious day. And if you have not subscribed to my channel, it costs you nothing. Only to press the bell. Subscribe and get the notification anytime that I post my message.
God bless you. And I also say thanks to all my subscribers. Thank you for your support. I hope to see you next week. Have a great day. God bless you. Have a great day. God bless you.